Hello all and welcome back to my channel. Apologies on the wait for a pipe welding video. I know originally most of you lot subscribed to me because I make these pipe welding videos and recently I've been doing unrelated stuff, reviews, um, house videos and stuff like that. So rest assured I have a video for you now. This here is a rolled 6G weld. Is that such a thing? I don't know, but it's a 45 degree position weld that is being rolled at the same time. This was an experiment. I was trying to see how it would come out because anytime I chop 45s into 22 and a half degrees, I always roll them and they come out nicely. I've never quite done a 45 degree before just because I was worried about how much the pipe would sag, but it came out nice in this video and this should be entertaining for you lot to watch as well so just to run through some of the technical data so i'm using a fronius tps 400i mig mag welder whatever you want to call it i know it's mag welding but mig welding is what it's commonly known for so yes i'm using that i am using m24 gas which is 12 percent co2 um argon mix i believe so yes 12 percent co2 I am running the route as a short circuit um, short circuit route and the cap is a pulse cap so the route it's a it's a smart machine I don't control wire speed or amperage um, no sorry I don't control volts and wire speed I control the amperage only so I'm gonna be welding this at around 140 to 130 amps for the route and I adjust it with the, the trigger if I have a small gap and I need to you know heat up a bit more to, to get the root penetration um, capping will be pulse again it's not like your normal AC TIG kind of pulse where it where it's it's got like a, a frequency Hertz where it's on and off on and off this this happens hundreds of times a second it's a different type of pulse Fronius have their pulse on lock that's what I know um, what else the wire is a one mil solid core copper free coating um, wire yes so this is all, all off the top of my head it's just a lot of technical data to go through so yes that's what I'm doing for the pipe it's 8 inch standard weight people can say it's like shed 40 but it's, it's STD weight pipe normally I weld shed 20 but yeah this is standard weight pipe it's about 6 to 8 mil thick no 8 to 10 mil thick I can't remember yeah it's, it's quite thick this stuff um, what else so the pipe is only going to be used to transport water medium temp low temp chilled water um, either one of them things normally the pipes i make go into data centers so it's low specification this is not nothing crazy that's why you see me tack on the pipes and some of the methods that i do to weld it it is all low spec but bear in mind the welds are still coming out nicely So I forgot to mention the cap will be done at 250 to 60 amps. Again, I control it on the trigger, turn it up a bit more or down. And that is that is for like the, the main weld that I'm going to be doing rolled. But for the 45 6G weld, I usually turn the power down to around 180, 160 amps. Just so it's not so powerful and the metal is deposited where I want it and it stays there. But with the 6G kind of weld I do two runs just to make sure the beads are smaller stay in place but they don't deposit as much metal so a second run is needed now I'm, I'm hanging the flanges so I measured the piece I'm just m making sure all my measurements are good and just flanging it like that so yeah it's measured I got how far the flange has to stick out I use a steel rule and a chalk to, to mark the line so I can play around with the flange and I know there's the line that I need to have it up to so I won't accidentally pull the flange out more or less than it needs to so I've got my bolt holes across for the two holes on top and then my level on the, the face and then I have it at a slight angle so when I do my tack at the top it kind of centers the flange rather than sitting it straight on the pipe and you've got no gap at the top and a huge gap at the bottom so it just depends on the type of pipe that you're doing some gaps are bigger than others now I've flipped it 90 degrees and I'm just going to level the flange off again. 
If you've ever done any amount of welding, you know just how much it pulls. So you can see the bubble slightly to the left, so I can tack underneath. And as it's pulling, as the weld is contracting and pulling the bubble into the middle, I can quickly tack the top. The camera isn't perfectly in line there, but it, to my eye, I made sure that um, it pulled level and then um, moved on. So it, it, it never looked like it in the camera, but it definitely pulled level. Again here, I only filmed doing one tack. It's slightly to the left. I tack the top and I wait enough time for it to naturally contract and pull the bubble into the middle. Then I tack the other side. You always have to do it. If you have the flange perfectly level, if you do a tack on the top, before you can get down to the tack underneath, it's pulled enough that it's no longer level. So you have to slightly have it out of whack and it pulls level. It's, it's, there's a lot of um, instinctual type of things you have to do when it comes to welding, especially pipe welding. So now here's the short circuit route. I'm not going to um, spend too much time explaining what's going on here. It's just an open route, a 3 mil gap. I'm um, using gravity to help get the route to fall in there. I am rotating the pipe at the same time. We don't have manipulators, so it's all hand done. I'm welding it in quarters again because, because I'm doing it this way here. I don't want it to pull too much. And I know I'm gonna get comments about the nine inch grinder. People, listen, I understand the danger of these machines. And you may think I'm being reckless with it, but I've been using them for about seven years. Touch wood, I haven't had a single accident because I am scared of all my tools. I respect all my tools. If you've noticed, all my grinders have guards on it as well as handles. So I'm just gonna put this out here. If you don't use a grinder without a guard or handle, you have no moral high ground to tell me that I can't be using a nine inch grinder for safety reasons. That's all I'm gonna say. So yes, I've done half and half. I don't usually do half and half. Again, the work specifications don't require you to have to do half and half. The, it's, it's, it's the welds done to a class two. I try to do it as good as I can, but being on price work, I get paid once this pipe is done. So there's certain corners you cut. You don't cut catastrophic corners, but certain little cheeky corners you cut just, just for speed. And one of them is being able to weld it all the way around in one go. A cheeky little lazy tip right here. I'm trying to um, cut this turning handle off because the way how I've tacked it, in order to pull it off, it's clashing with my um, counterweight. So I'm just heating up the weld and I'm almost gouging out the, the material and letting, letting it get uh, super hot and then having gravity basically pull on the molten pull and, and make it drip out. So that's, that's uh, a little tip you can do. And it nearly hit me in my, um, my balls. That was a close one. Um, yeah, so this, this here is the, the hard part. So I could have welded this piece on first. Yes, definitely. And then added it onto the piece after. But both lengths were almost equal in length. So maybe it's just me. Maybe I wanted uh, uh, some entertainment while working. I've done so many welds, so thousands of welds that I get bored. So sometimes I set myself challenges or I just try, I tr I try to think outside the box. Here's me bopping my head listening to music. But yeah, so it's fun welding in 45s. You, you just have to twist your body and go with the, the contours of the pipe. Have a very loose frame and, and just basically angle your torch. So you can see there's a tight gap there, a bigger gap on the other side, no problem. Uh, my, my feathers are huge because I like to be at temperature by the time I blow through so my um, start stops they are almost non-existent really because when I tack my pipes I, I do my tacks like roots so there's more material there and I can just blow through them burn through it so nice again here you're gonna see me um, just kind of be loose and flexible I'm turning the, the, the welding torch into the root gap just I'm trying to fight gravity what gravity wants to do is pull the weld in a particular way and I am using the power of the wire being pushed out to try to um, 
push the world in a, in a particular way that fights gravity as best as it can. You won't be able to completely fight gravity, but you can fight it enough that the worlds come out nice. So once the root run is done, hit it with the grinder, um, clean it up. It's just a nicer weld, really, once you clean it up. It gets rid of all the contaminants. Again, I think I do this in half and half, just because, um, again, I don't really particularly need to. I'm sure you should, but cut corners, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, so here's the first run, low power, fuses nicely to one side, and then I use my smaller grinder with the guard and the handle to open up the gap on the other side so I get nice fusion and then again you see me turning the, the, the weld torch trying to fight gravity there keeping my frame nice and loose so I can get my way around the pipe and um, yeah the second the second run will be done soon and it was a fun weld to do now the long part flanges oh I hate flanges but again so this here would be pulse welded it the beauty of pulse it it allows your welds to stay in position so you can do you can weld overhead with pulse welding and you'll get nice um, penetration characteristics as well as no spatter as long as the settings are correct and, and the pipe is clean and um, yeah you can weld overhead um, upside down to the side vertical up all sorts of things as long as your power isn't too crazy that it drips down you can weld in any position so I'm taking full advantage of it now, welding at a 45 degree angle. Um, um, you could say I'm stoving it, yeah, definitely you could say I'm stoving it, but I'm angling the torch to try to push the, the molten metal back up to try to stop it from dripping all the way down with gravity. So this video is wrapping up shortly. This was a quick one, just two welds, two flanges. So the video is coming to an end, it's wrapping up very shortly, just doing a inside flange weld. The outside flange you can't really see, I, I didn't quite record it properly. But yeah, the inside flange, like 250, 260 amps, pushing it. Some people drag it, you can drag with, with this type of MIG, it still comes out nice, but I push it, I think it comes uh, looks a lot cleaner. Um, the outside you can't really see. But the next clip will be the reveal of this pipe. And with that being said, I hope you've not enjoyed it all. This was a fun little quick video. Should be um, hopefully pumping out a few more videos a lot faster now. Uh, I know I've been, been slacking. It's, I've got a little boy now, so... And the house to maintain is it's, it's a bit, bit hard trying to find the time for the family and these videos. But I'll try to stick on to it. Check out the next video, I have my friend coming down and it is like the ultimate guide in alloy wheel repair. It is a good one, so subscribe to, to see that one. Check out some of my old videos where I built my garage and um, renovated my house for example. But yes, with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.